Good morning, 3SV. It is Tuesday. This is my last day with you, and Mrs. Vellis is with you tomorrow morning. Uh, we're going to get on to, to, to today's work, but before we do, I just want to say to you that there is a secret message hidden in this video. It is four words long, so I want you to listen out when I tell you the word. You're going to write it down, and in sequence, you're going to make out a little sentence, and you, once you've got that sentence, you can post it to me in the Google Classroom on that little quiz file on the left-hand side, the little box. Click in there and see if you can earn a dojo by getting it right. So let's crack on and let's see what today's work is. Let me get rid of myself again, moving me down to the smallest part of the screen. Here we go. The first thing we're going to do today is your spelling. You're going to look at the alphabetical order and pop all the spelling words into alphabetical order. I think you're doing really well with that, so keep that up. The live stream, it sounded like there was some fun in the live stream yesterday, so I heard a few of you chatting about that on the chat line, so that was, that was great. Uh, a bit of fun. Now, what we've got is our reading and comprehension. So what we're looking at today is skimming and scanning. It is a skill that many adults do and you're learning it already to do it. So it is around, it's about looking at a text. And if you've, if you've got a question about something, you look at the question and you find the word that's most important, then you skim and scan your text. Lots of other ways to skim and scan. And this is a student bookmark that tells you how to skim and scan. So that's why it's repeated twice, because the department has put two up there on the one page for you to be able to cut them out. So you're really only look, reading and looking at one, but they're telling you exactly what they want or some of the ideas, sorry, that you can use to skim and scan. So, for example, skimming texts, you're finding out the general idea. So you read through it and you skim over it and you get a rough idea of what's going on by picking out all the main important words you're leaving you don't worry about the and and sometimes they play a very important part however one of the important things the strategies they're saying you know if you read the first and the last paragraph that might help you enormously and you're just looking for general information and it's the same you're scanning so when you're scanning text you look over you look it over really quickly and you're looking to locate words when you come down to this next section when you're going to skim and scan you're looking at this bike information chart you're really just overviewing this with your eyes to get some ideas so straight away my my eyes fall on the word knees then as I you know slide my eyes down I can see heels and handlebar I'm just picking out little individual words so I think when you look at this what will happen if your seat is too low well you're looking for low and seat and those two things, because a seat might come into a, uh, be a couple of sentences, but you've got to look for the combine, the combination of those two, seat and low, to find the answer. So see if you can skim and scan and come up with the correct answers there. When you do find the words that you're skimming for, you then do closely read that sentence to make sure you're on the right piece of information and that you haven't skimmed or scanned over something. So you it's not just a matter of finding a word and then saying that's it. You actually have to read then what you've just identified as being part of the word you're looking for. You've got to go deeper. Always go deeper. So see how you go with those. You've got a few little things to do in those boxes, five boxes. Attention, here is your first word, holidays. I have set you a task in reading eggs. Um, some of you are just sitting on the same thing because you haven't gone into Reading X to do your Reading Express. So those people who are charging ahead, we've got a couple of girls who are really close to 100, which is amazing. In fact, I think next week they're going to be 100. So um, those of you who are sitting on the same text, make sure you get it reread. Well, number one, go into Reading X and do it. Because um, otherwise, I'm going to just keep setting you the same task because you're not doing it. Um, and for those children who are seeing a text the second time, it means that the last text I gave you, you didn't have a good enough comprehension task, so I can't put you up. So I've looked to find another text below that level that you've done, and that's why you've gone down. So please, you're really looking to get 80% or more by really carefully reading that text and answering the questions appropriately. Super important. Here is your second word, ah. But then you've got your contractions and you've got two levels 
that you can choose from. So there's spelling level 2, two and it's got 2.26. And there's a spelling level 3, which has got 3.30. So you're really just choosing whether you're going to do level 2 or level 3. And it's all about contractions and knowing that two words, when they're slammed together, we rip out word, rip, we rip out letters and we put an apostrophe. And the apostrophe means letters are missing. So that's all a contraction is. Two words slammed together with letters ripped out and an apostrophe, apostrophe inserted. So um, that's your task there. And I don't think you'll have too much trouble with that at all. It's fairly straightforward. Those, and there's two pages on each of those levels. Here is your third word coming. Now, the next thing you've got here is you're doing a writing and you're just doing that idea that we've been looking at of making sentences better. And this is why, because when you read something and they're short sentences, it is very dull. Have a little listen to this. This sentence has five words. Here are five more words. Five word sentences are fine, but several together become monotonous. Listen to what is happening. The writing is getting boring. The sound of it drones. It's like a stuck record. The ear demands some variety. That little paragraph is full of five word sentences. And when you put them all together, that is a really dull, boring text. As Soon as you put variety, some short sentences. Some really short, just two words, some long sentences and some five word sentences. You mix it up, your writing becomes interesting. If you keep the same length over and over, your writing is boring. So what you're going to do, read that page so you know exactly what's going on and listen to the differences. Then we want you to go here and we want you to rewrite these sentences to be more to be better to be more more powerful more interesting so here is your example the boy ate the sweet medium long example hungrily the boy devoured a lolly that tasted like heaven on earth so that the word ate has been ripped out the word sweet has been changed to lolly and instead of ate the word devoured and that gives you an understanding that he is absolutely gobbling it with relish he loves it Whereas eight, you could eat anything. Do you like it? Do you not like it? We don't know. But this tells us more that when he's devouring it, it's almost as if he wants more and more because it's so delicious. So see if you can change it up a bit. So you've got uh, seven sentences to do. Away you go with that. I'm not going to explain the multiplication. I'm really hoping you did well yesterday. Go and look at the video for the multiplication. That'll extend you further. Just a little tiny bit. And it's taking us to the next level, particularly for the, this level two, where you've got three digits. That's all explained. Okay, so we've got our maths. A bit of flick on here too. There is a game, multiply, multiple madness. That's self-explanatory there. You can read it and play it. You need two partners. And we actually have played this in class. So this is a little reminder to you of us playing it in class. Last word is soon. Put those four words together, put it up into the Google Classroom, see if you can get a dojo point. Here is the science task. It's the blue planet. It is an assessment task. So what we want you to do is to finish this and upload it and turn it into the classroom. It is sitting there. You can even use those pages that are sitting inside the Google Classroom, inside the assignment. Use those pages. It's worth 10 points, five points for doing the closed passage. Certainly not hard, but definitely watch the video before you answer this. It's there to direct you. You've then got a question here, which is worth three points. What do you think might happen if the ocean, of, to the ocean if the moon did not exist? So I want you to use that understanding that you've gained from the video and from this reading. And this is worth two points because there's a bit of maths involved. You know, the question is, if Mount Everest was submerged under the ocean, can you estimate how much further you would need to travel to reach the lowest point of the Mariana Trench? So 
you will have a you can have a little go at that so it's worth 10 points make sure you turn it in some of you love to send it to us that's great but it's much much better if you can learn to turn it in truly learn to turn it in if you can turn it in you get a dojo really important fact there out of 10 see how you go um, over and out from me have a great week with mrs ellis catch you later